and welcome to The Journey, brought to you by VIP Socio. I'm your host, Tiffany Irvin, and I'm here with the founder of VIP Socio himself, Mr. Innocent Wami. Welcome and thank you so much for being here with us today. Hey Tiffany, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure talking with you. I'm really excited about this interview that we have with Mr. Wami today. We're going to be talking about a plethora of things um, in regards to the journey of entrepreneurship, where that journey starts from A to B to Z. So I really want to begin with what is VIP Socio? Well, you know, I always love to talk about VIP Socio because that's my baby. For sure. So VIP Socio is really, it's a black culture hub. It's an Afro culture hub, right? We, we do three things. We're an event ticketing platform, mm -hmm. similar to every other ticketing platform you have out there. We're a marketplace, right. right? Similar to Shopify or Amazon. And we're also an influencer platform. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've successfully brought all three of those platforms together. And our main focus is really to accelerate Afro culture, to make sure that every entrepreneur, every business person, every event organizer that comes on our platform right. is able to make money. And our biggest difference is the fact that we provide a platform where they're not making money just with one, they, they don't have only one revenue stream. Right. right. We make sure that when you come there as an event organizer, you could make money as an influencer. Right. Or if you're an event organizer and you have a brand, you could sell on our platform. Right. On the other side, if you're a brand or you're an influencer on Instagram, on Facebook, and you're on our platform, we provide you a good online online presence that allows you to, to tap into all of your strengths, mm -hmm. tap into multiple revenue streams. Right. Nobody else out in the industry does that. Right. And I get that it takes a lot of work to get from point A to point B to point C. But what I really want to know about is why did you start the platform? Why did you start VIP Socio? And how has your personal life influenced you to embark on this journey? You know, that, that is one question that I, I used to answer very lightly mm -hmm. when I did interviews, but it is probably the most important question for any entrepreneur out there. I agree. Right? Why, why, why do you want to embark on this journey? Why do you want to leave, leave the life you've been living? Why do you want to leave corporate America and embark on this entrepreneurship journey? Right. Because it's really tough. Right, right. And for me, this, this, is, this is very personal mm -hmm. because I think the entrepreneurial spirit in me comes from way, way back, from when I was young. So I was brought up by two mothers. Oh wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> and I, I, I'll, I'll explain it. So it's okay. my mom, mm -hmm. because she had me really young at 16, uh -huh. and at some point in her life she had to go pursue her, her education. And my aunt, her older sister, actually raised me with her grandma. So I really have two mothers. Right. And the two of them together with my dad, Right, taught me several things. My mom is more of a scholar, right. but my aunt was an entrepreneur. Right. And this is this is back home in Cameroon. I'm from I'm from West Africa. This is back home, and she basically grew up in a small town. Mm -hmm. But I learned diversification from your mom. From no, from my uh, from my aunt. That okay. Right? My second mom. Right. I, right. I, I I I I cannot even refer to her as my mom. So what she taught me, I, I saw her diversify at, an, at a very early stage in my life, mm -hmm. when I was about eight or 10 or 12 years old. Right. right. I saw her manage four or five different businesses right. and have a great understanding. Even after my MBA here, I only came to the realization that, you know what, she was, the, without any formal education, she was probably the best business person and she sold a seed in me. Right. What my mom and dad did was make sure that I understood the importance of school. So I just want to um, interject. Mm -hmm. Clearly that takes a lot of courage for your mom to be a 16 year old young mom to still embark on her own journey to getting a higher education to actually live in a developing country which is what we classify Cameroon as in America. So it gave you some type of courage that it takes to actually start the journey, like the actual entrepreneurship journey. And I noticed that you said something about challenges. So initially, with the why, 
clearly your upbringing has influenced you tremendously. Like what outside of the why and the challenges that you would say that you have faced along the journey of creating the VIP socio? Well, so, so as an entrepreneur, there, there, there are multiple problems, right? It's, it's, it's a journey that you have to actually have a lot of grit. You have to have persistence, you have to have a vision. Right. What they instilled in me was a vision. Right. Was that ambition, was that desire for something better. Mm -hmm. To a point where I worked in corporate America for 18 years. Right. But inside of me there was always there was always that desire, that desire to do something bigger. Right. That desire to put something of myself out there right. for, for other people to consume. Right. And that that is what they really they really instilled in me. Right. Um, I think that with courage and leaving corporate America, that is one of the scariest things. People really glamorize being an entrepreneur yeah. these days. So just give me a brief kind of insight on how was it actually leaving corporate America and saying that I know that this is something that I have to contribute. Like, how did that transition go? Well, it took a lot. Like I said, it took 18 years of working in corporate America. Right. It took for me wow. to go do an MBA, mm -hmm. right? And to to have the courage to do in the US. Right. I've always been an, an entrepreneur at heart. I've started ventures in Cameroon when, when we initially started, when the internet was just budding, I own an internet cafe in Cameroon. Oh wow. And VIP Social is not the first uh, online application I've done. Mm -hmm. I started Carbon Black and I exited that. Mm -hmm. And then after Carbon Black, it was Event Turn Up. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, after my MBA, even with the courage, with the understanding, right. I still started small. I owned a banquet hall in Suwannee, Georgia. Oh, wow. And I ran that for six, for six years. It fed a lot of my understanding of events mm -hmm. that led me into creating Event Turn Up. Right. Event Turn Up is actually, was actually a platform that allow event organizers, caterers to come together and allow people to be able to find venues, mm -hmm. DJs, caterers, and uh, musicians if they needed them for their event. So it was a long journey right. leading up to VIP social. Right. But the courage part of it is a lot of people have ideas out there, but it takes so much courage. I could have an idea and I, I create something in in my basement mm -hmm. and I say you know what Tiffany you're a friend of mine mm -hmm. can you try this out right that is so different right. when you have to put something out and you know thousands of people mm -hmm. that you have never met in your life are going to consume this product right and you're not they're not going to call you and say oh, I tried to do this and it failed I right. tried to do that and it right. failed right. you understand so there's there's a degree of courage right. that you actually need to, to put you it's, it's like putting a part of and yourself and having confidence out there. like yeah. having confidence yeah. in yourself and although there may be tons of people that's going to consume your product like you have to have some type of intention and I know off air we've talked so many in so many different aspects of what your intention was which is the why as to like the actual creation of the IT Socio so what exactly are you solving like there are so many event hubs all over you can we can click on a numerous of names Absolutely. but what is it that VIP Socio is trying to bring the to whomever that is your intention like what is the intention behind VIP social so so if, if you look online and this goes back to when I first moved to, to this country mm -hmm. let's not even look at when I first moved when I left college and I first moved to Atlanta right to go out every night I needed to turn on V103 Right, right. To listen to, to what was happening. Right. And it wasn't because if I went online, there were not things happening. The problem was if you go to Google mm -hmm. and you search the first black venue or the first black club might show up on page five or page six. Right. And the reviews are not there because black businesses don't actually spend that money or they don't have, the smaller businesses don't have the money right. to rank number one on Google. Right. And it's the same thing if you travel to LA, you travel to New York. And being African, I love African music. I love hip hop. I love Caribbean music. Right. It so is so far, difficult. Yeah. yeah. It's mm -hmm. so difficult if I get to New York today, I literally have to call five, six, or seven people to, t to tell me what is happening. Mm -hmm. So I felt like there is really a need right. for a hub 
for Afro culture. Now, when I say Afro culture, I'm talking about black culture. Period. Right. Oh. Where people that want to consume Afro culture will be like a kid in a candy store when they get when they get onto VIP social. Right. So that 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 for me was the biggest problem. Right. Right. There was no solution out there. There's no single hub where right. we can come. And not just African or black people or Caribbean. Anybody that admires Afro culture. You know Afro culture today influ influencing influences music, influences art, fashion, right? influences fashion. Right. But that brings me to the to the other part of it. So we influence all of these cultures, right. but none of us make any money out of it. And that is the key to VIP Socio. I want to create a platform where all these creatives can come and actually monetize. Because what happens now is when you hear trap music, might have started in Atlanta, in South, Southeast Atlanta. Right. 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 There's thousands of young kids that actually created Listen. created this, this culture. Mm -hmm. But one out of maybe a hundred thousand of them will make it. Right. Right. So we need we need some kind of medium for those creators to actually benefit from right. the influence that they're they're having on, on popular culture. So and basically you've created this black enterprise or you're let me say you're contributing to the black enterprise, which I think is amazing because um, the solution to a lot of our problems, I'm a young person, I use VIP Socio, I advertise on VIP Socio, and um, it definitely has... Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, I've made money off of your app, so I know that to be very, very, very true. I think that with the intention, how do you feel like you as an individual, um, with your background coming from West Africa to America, um, you're a tech guy, you know, they don't know that you're definitely a tech guy. All in all, the, the vision going forward, like as far as actually uh, contributing to black enterprise and monetizing and how is that going to help everyone else around us? Well, for one, um, we've had our, we've, we've been exploited True. in a way. Well, the term is appropriation. Right, yes, our cultural culture is being appropriated. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what what I really envision VIP social being is I want in five years for Essence when they're having an event to use VIP social. Right. I want BET when they're having events to use right. VIP social. Right. I want the Curly Girl Festival to happen on VIP social. I want all the Caribbean Caribbean carnivals. Right. to use VIP social for ticketing. Right. And in so doing, we're wanting to bring authentic, authentic Afro culture. Right. Similar to when you want to eat Italian. Right. You find an Italian restaurant. Right. When you want to eat uh, Spanish food, mm -hmm. you find a Spanish restaurant. Mm -hmm. When you want to consume Afro culture, yeah. you need to find Afro culture that is curated by Afro Africans curated by black people mm -hmm. and that benefits black people right right and what has been missing in in black america uh, if i can if i can take it down just to black america, what has been missing in black america is the absence of us creating ecosystems right. that actually feed everybody that interacts with that right. ecosystem right so in short you're creating from this one hub we're creating more jobs for our people. We're creating, we're bringing awareness. We're owning our culture and we're spreading the culture in short. Basically. And we're making money for everybody that comes to right. that platform. Right. I think that um, what you're doing is amazing. I know that you're going to be back for at least three other episodes yes. of the journey. And I want to thank you so much for just giving us a brief introduction to VIP Socio. I want to thank everybody for listening. Um, until next time, I love you for watching. Thank you.